What's going on, guys? Daru Strong Podcast, episode number 26. I'm your host, Phil Daru. Today, I was joined with Paige Van Zandt and Maureen Shea. We talked a bunch of different things about females and their role in combat sports and also Paige's rise to the UFC and also now her transition into bare knuckle fighting. Now, before we go ahead and get into the conversation, I have to shout out the sponsors. Revive MD, check out revivesubs.com. Go ahead and go into my very own Fielderu Athlete Stack. You can get it now for 20% off if you hit the discount code DeRustrong20 for your final purchase. I have all my all my athletes on this, including myself. All the supplements are tried and true, and I highly recommend them. Now, if you haven't done so, if you haven't checked out my mentorship program, make sure you go ahead and do so. If you are a coach trying to elevate their game and your knowledge base, you can check out all of my protocols, my methods of training inside that mentorship where you'll have access forever. Again, like I said, one-time fee, and you get access for life. So check it out. We'll head, go ahead and put the link in the description if you want to check that out. And also make sure my brand new program, Fight Dominance. It's a year-long program where you get off-camp training each and every week. And you'll get question and answer from me on a weekly and daily basis. So go ahead and check it out. I, I partnered up with Train Heroic to give you this app so you guys can be ready and able to start camp whenever the time comes. So Fight Dominance. Check it out now. Now. Let's get into the conversation. Episode number 26. Let's go. To the Strong Podcast. Strong Podcast. Let's go. Mind over matter. Put your mind somewhere else and keep going. That little voice in your head is trying to stop you from getting to where you want to be. Be successful and keep moving forward. With your host and world-renowned strength and conditioning coach, Phil Delroo. All right, ladies, welcome. This is episode number 26, Miss Paige Van Zandt. And I'm blessed again with <laughs> Miss Maureen Shea, two-time world champion. And I do want to go ahead and go over your background and everything else. Yeah. Maureen's probably got some questions for you, too. Oh, cool. And I had some interesting IG questions that I'm not going to ask because yeah. you guys are crazy. I'm going to ask my own questions because <laughs> it's my show. I can probably do that, correct? <laughs> All right, so Paige, let's get into it. What got you started in the in combat sports in general now because you're transitioning over but martial arts and in sport just give me your background yeah so i actually started into mma i went straight into mma I didn't do like a background in jujitsu or boxing or any, anything like that mm -hmm. um my family had moved from oregon to nevada mm -hmm. and i was actually a professional dancer as a kid and okay. when we moved to Nevada there was no good dance studios that I really felt that fit what I was looking for yeah. and um, I was a little bit burnt out I had danced since I was like two years old yeah. so my parents convinced me to go try an MMA class because my dad was a really big fan of this guy named Ken Shamrock mm -hmm. and um, now I know he's like a legend yeah. and <laughs> he ended up being my very first coach so oh, I walked oh, in wow. tried a class yeah. and stuck with it Wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So you went, it was in Vegas, correct? No, in Reno, Nevada. In Nevada. Reno. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're close to Vegas, but like, so did you go to any fights then? Or did you no, I had never been to a fight. Yeah. I hadn't, I had never been to a UFC fight until like assigned to the UFC. Gotcha. And okay. then wow. my manager was like, you have to go to a fight before you fight for the <laughs> yeah. UFC. So Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so dancing, that kind of makes sense because Dancing with the Stars, yep. you kind of was like, oh, let me go back into it a little bit. Yeah. Um, so the transition now, like, what did you feel like you were, you took to MMA? Like, what was the best thing that you could take, right, from dancing? You yeah. Know? Because, again, you have a large amount of coordination in, mm -hmm. inside fighting. Did you think that that kind of helped you catapult your career in, in some ways? I definitely think it did, especially at a young age. I just picked it up really quickly. I feel like there's a lot of similarities between dance and, like, jujitsu or mm -hmm. even striking. It's um, learning the technique and the muscle memory and knowing your body and being able to feel yeah. and, like, pick up the moves from just seeing it. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely picked up. Um, fighting quickly I feel like because of dance there was some yeah. habits I had to break and I'm still working on breaking those mm -hmm. um, just because I was in dance for so long and yeah. being in, in ballet forever you're taught to stand tall and have your chin up and um, breaking that habit especially for striking was was hard how many fights did you have before you went to the UFC 
Um, gosh, four. Four fights. Four wow. fights total. So I only had one amateur fight. Wow. And then I went um, yeah. straight pro. So how old were you when you went to that MMA class? I was 15. Wow. Yeah, 15 okay. and when I first started. That's and crazy. I walked in and I had no intentions of fighting or becoming a fighter. I was just kind of training. It was fun. Yeah. I got into college when I was 16 years old, so I kind of figured I would go the academic route and mm -hmm. have a, you know, get a degree mm -hmm. and figure out like some sort of business venture. Yeah. But by the time I was 18, I had one amateur fight and I was like, oh, I really like this. And <laughs> I was like, all right, let's do this. And yeah. I, then I went straight pro. Nice. Wow. Well, okay. So now we get to Ken Shamrock's place, right? Mm -hmm. Were you the first female fighter to step into that gym? Because back then it was it wasn't that wasn't no, a lot of so females. No, so back then in, especially because they're tech, they're called the Lions Den. Yeah. And they didn't really train women. So, but when I went, I was the only girl for a while, and a few girls came and went mm -hmm. um, through the gym, but I can't recall very many. Yeah. But I only trained with uh, Ken from ages like sixteen to. Or 15 to 17, okay. I would say. And then um, he shut his gym down in oh, Reno, yeah. so then That's I had true. to find somewhere else to train. That's true. Okay, so what was the transition after that? I know you went, you were at Team Alpha Male for a little bit. Yeah, so I was at another local, small local gym in Reno. That's where I actually um, had my first pro fight out of. Mm -hmm. And then once I became a pro, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I, I need to find, like, I need to actually do this, like, legitimately yes. do it. Mm -hmm. I moved to Vegas for a year, but I was only 18. And mm -hmm. in Vegas, especially at the time, and I think still, still to this day, a lot of the athletes, when you're full-time in Vegas, you kind of gym hop. So you go yeah. here for your main MMA gym, and you go here for jiu-jitsu, and here for boxing. And gotcha. um, me being so young, I yeah. really needed, like, a team for around sure. me. I wanted, like, that team aspect. And I had heard of Uriah Faber, mm -hmm. and I heard about Team Alpha Male, and knew mm -hmm. that they were known for their smaller weight classes. Mm -hmm. They're having a lot of success. So yeah. um, I just up and moved to Sacramento. What year was this? I was 19 yeah, so by the time I ended up at Team Alpha Male. Yeah. Um, 2000. I have no idea. I'm times. 26 wow. now. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, I mean, a, a little bit ago. So, yeah. so, it's like seven years ago. So, I would say it's the beginning of when The Ultimate Fighter was getting big, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, did you feel like that was something like you were like, okay, I could see the UFC getting bigger did you want to pursue that like that was the only goal or were you like i don't care i just want to fight uh for me it was just more about fighting honestly i didn't really have my sights set on the ufc because i didn't uh -huh. think i was there yet mm -hmm. i had only had one amateur fight i was two and one as a pro or something when i stepped into team alpha male and yeah. i was telling your eye like all right like I, i'm a pro fighter like this is what i want to do this and i want to become like successful and yeah. and he's like okay and like told me the classes I needed to show up at and it wasn't long I think I only had one or two more fights maybe just one more fight no after I was a team off I think I went straight to the UFC I don't know it was whatever the timeline was gotcha. but they, they definitely prepared me for the UFC Okay, so how was it though, like going into practice with those guys? I know they're they're really high strong, right? Yeah. They, they keep uh -huh. a, a, a good pace too, as well. They definitely do. And and you had some good coaches, and Uriah obviously mm -hmm. kind of holds it all together. Um, so how was your how was your relationship with those guys, and is that still there? Like, yeah, no, it was an amazing gym, an amazing opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. They took me definitely from that beginning pro to the UFC level. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who prepared me for that. Yeah. And, um, you know, it kind of worked out along my career because until now, I, I don't know that I was actually a fan of the sport. I just trained because I liked it yeah. and I knew I wanted to fight. So yeah. walking in, and it's so, this is the funniest story. So walking in, I knew the gym was called Team Alpha Male. Mm -hmm. I had no idea who Uriah Faber was. I had no <laughs> idea who any of the guys on the team were. Yeah. To me, they were just other, just fighters. Yeah, yeah. So I walk in and like Uriah's picture is all over the wall and mm -hmm. they have like a big billboard of him. And I'm like, <laughs> gosh, like the other fighters, you have to get jealous. Like yeah. they really yeah. like Uriah. <laughs> and then I'm like telling my dad this on the phone. He's like, well, honey, that's his gym. Yeah. Like that he owns the gym. And I'm yeah. like, that, that makes, makes a sense. lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yep. funny. So, all right, and now you're in there, you're training with those guys. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like, all right, when you got your spot, how did you get your spot in the UFC, by the way? Okay, so I had fought for Invicta, and then I went sure. and fought on some a smaller local show based okay. out of Colorado. I had a really fast submission win, and at the time, I was kind of gaining my name as mm -hmm. a fighter in 
definitely in like the female division mm -hmm. and they decided that this is at this point ronda is huge like having yeah. tons of success in the ufc so they yeah. decided to open another female division mm -hmm. 115 was the next most popular division outside yeah. of 135 at the time mm -hmm. so they decided to have the ultimate fighter yeah. and originally dana called me and said hey i'm putting a group of however many girls yeah. go on the ultimate fighter i'm not sure and you're one of the people we're bringing on for the ultimate fighter and that conversation was crazy like in itself <laughs> but uh unfortunately i was only 19 yeah. and you have to be 21 to be That's on the right. ultimate fighter yeah. so they kicked me out because oh. i was too young but it was fortunate i'm really yeah. happy that i didn't honestly have to go through that experience i know there's been like there's back and forth a lot of girls say they loved it a lot of girls say yeah. they hated it mm -hmm. Regardless, I was not meant for the reality show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet it was. I mean, it's always weird to just be trapped in a house. You know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. And then have nothing but alcohol, no TV, and oh, yeah, you got to fight. No, Every I mean, one of them. Everyone that you have to fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, again, at the time, I was so new to the sport. I didn't. I mean, I felt like the MMA world, like, now, too, I know all the girls. Like, yeah. you know each other. You've True. been around. You know of each other. Mm -hmm. And you kind of know what to expect. Whereas mm -hmm. I had three fights, and I was like... Yeah. What yeah. I don't I don't know these girls yeah, like it's just gonna be yeah. really weird and yeah. yeah. So when you get to the UFC, right? Mm -hmm. Your first fight, who who'd you fight? For your first I fight? fought Kaylin Curran. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. this is a good fight. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How'd that go? Great fight. Honestly, mm -hmm. it was super back and forth. Um, we had an amazing fight. We ended up getting fight of the night. Nice. Um, but I got a TKO in the third round. Nice. Like, TKO owner. So got, it was got a good it. fight. Yeah. Damn. That's but cool. no, amazing fight. Especially like I'm so thankful to her. We put on such a good show because. It was life changing. I mean, yeah. I ended up getting a fifty thousand dollar bonus because yeah. we put on a good fight. And you showed the world that one fifteen pound girls can can throw down. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Right? Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't like we went out there and it wasn't. It was like a super technical back and forth. It was jiu jitsu. It was striking. It was. Yeah. yeah it ended up being. It was an awesome fight. What would you say was your toughest MMA fight though? It doesn't have to be in the UFC, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So I've had fights. Obviously, I have losses. I've had losses in the UFC. Mm -hmm. I think. The great thing for me is knowing the people that I've lost to, like yeah. my only ones, Michelle Waterson, yeah. Rose, mm -hmm. um, Jesse Jess, she just fought yep, and had yep. an amazing fight this mm -hmm. last, I was texting yeah, you about her. Yeah. Uh -huh, um, I, like, I like Jess, man, she's, she's cool. She's awesome. Yeah, so, Australian shit. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I saw the fights too. I think outside of my fight with her, just because I mean I shattered my arm in the fight and yeah. had to fight with a broken arm, but um, I think the most respect, like I really respect Rose as Rose Snumunas as yeah. an athlete. That yeah. fight with her and like people say I don't look like a fighter. Like I don't think she does either. Like <laughs> she's like this cute, yeah. tiny well, like she doesn't look terrifying. It was one of those I think that was the reason why she like shaved her head, wasn't it? Oh she was like nah, fuck this. Fuck, yeah, I'm well she's but she still looks pretty really good. She looks good. Yeah. She fucked that you up. got a pretty big ass. <laughs> yeah. so, but Backfired. The <laughs> reason, yeah, the reason that fight stands out for me is because, you know, there's wins and losses where I can say, like, oh, like, I didn't, you know, I quit or I, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. That mm -hmm. fight, I gave it everything yeah. I had. Left it and out she there. left my heart out there and she still beat me. Yeah. But her, this skinny, like, cute looking girl, she hits harder than anyone's ever hit me. Yeah. <laughs> ever. For sure. Wow. She's hit me harder, like, at being on Team Alpha Male as long really? as I was. She's a good striker. She's I a good watched striker. her punch. She, like, she's good. Yeah. She's jabbed me. Really well. I was, yeah, I was impressed with her turnovers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Because, you know, watching MMA, I'm always looking at a boxing standpoint. Yeah. I'm like, let me see how they look stand up. I was like, mm -hmm. wow. She really comes forward with that momentum yep. throwing the punches. Yeah. She jabbed me and then cut me open. Oh, and I've, I have never been hit as hard as she hit me. Wow. And yeah. she just doesn't, you know, she's like and, and sweet. Like, I know, she, right? She, I know. she hits it's hard. Like, yeah. Uh -huh. She changes angles and, like, kind of changes rhythms almost yeah. too as well, yep. uh -huh. which really catches the girls yep. off guard. Uh, I mean, caught your one off guard a little mm -hmm. bit yep. too with the last fight with, the, mm -hmm. with her. And I would say that she has progress so fast so well in her yeah career. Mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome to see oh it's amazing yeah so, all right so get back to you though this is about you <laughs> um all right now you're working with my girl here yeah right <laughs> and we got you in the in the weight room too getting yep. you stronger mm -hmm. um what was your what was your like what was the main reason i mean everybody wants to know you know why I, mean? I went to bare knuckle. They're like, they're like, why is this pretty girl with this face uh -huh. is going to bare knuckle to get cut up and, and have fun, I guess, and in your opinion, it would be fun. You yeah. Know what I'm yeah. For me, think? yeah. For me, there was a lot of reasons behind yeah. it. It wasn't just one. And this is a, something I definitely weighed my options. I had a lot of amazing promotions come and give me offers. The UFC offered me a new contract renewal. Mm -hmm. Um 
of course, I had Bellator. There was like one FC was in the mix somewhere. Yeah. This other one based out of I think France. I don't, um, I don't even know where I know what you're talking about, but I, I we were like, what what is that? Yeah, so I had a, a lot of amazing offers, but at the time, it just bare knuckle was the one that excited me. That was yeah. where my passion was. Mm-hmm. Where. And you know, I, I feel like in MMA, I kept having these setbacks and it didn't matter how hard I worked or what I did, I kept breaking my arm. Yeah. And so beyond beyond wanting to like have a new opportunity, it's also an amazing time for me to heal and continue yeah. to grow in um, my striking, continue to heal my arm. Mm-hmm. Um, they're an amazing company. And yeah. two, the money was right. I was just really excited about it. All, it all just came together and all signs pointed to bare knuckle. Nice, yeah. So, I mean, Bellator probably offered you money. UFC mm-hmm. probably offered you money. Bellator, offered, or not Bellator, but Bare Knuckle offered you money. But this is something that you really want to go after. Exactly. Not, not for the money. It's no. more, more for personal It's reasons. more for personal reasons. Yeah. Because if it was about, I mean, it was strictly about money. There was, like, other where, other areas I could go. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, this sure. is, I'm going to have to change so much. And, like, mm-hmm. you know that. So mm-hmm. much of me has to change to be yeah. successful in this. Mm-hmm. But I I liked the idea of the opportunity. And mm-hmm. There could have been an easier route career-wise, I guess, yeah. to go yeah. somewhere else. But I wanted the challenge. and Sure. Yeah, people say, like, oh, you shouldn't have to prove anything to your haters. But it's like, <laughs> but that's the point. Like, I want to prove myself. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. like, so exciting. And um, Well, your haters going to give you energy. Yeah, That's exactly. the energy to, to work harder. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's the thing is, like, it's not really about proving them wrong. It's proving yourself right. You <laughs> know what I mean? So with that being said... Here comes more than you say. <laughs> um, now, what are you guys working on so far? So, in, in the I mix mean, now. So, I know it's well, beginning stage. Yeah, now, of but. course. I mean, like like Paige said, you know, a lot of the stuff that she had. I mean, I love the fact that she was a dancer. I sat her down. We talked. Um, and I was excited for the opportunity as well because I relate a lot to you. Mm-hmm. Like, there's so much about even me, like with boxing. Like, I wasn't raised in boxing. I went to the gym to, to better myself for, you know, for low self-esteem. Mm-hmm. And then, like, there were these other pro fighters around me. I had no yeah. idea who they were. Mm-hmm. I only knew who Mike Tyson was. Yeah. So there's so <laughs> much similarities where I'm like, all right, who's this? I'm like, oh, that's somebody? Like, I had dinner with Roberto Duran, didn't realize, like, who that was, you know what yeah. I mean? All this stuff. And even, like, Joe Frazier came in and showed me how to jab. I'm like, okay. And then I was like, whoa, you know, yeah. it's crazy. So I can relate a lot to that. Mm-hmm. But her dancing background, I was like, all right, and I've seen her on Dancing with the Stars. The rhythm is in the control of her body, and that's athleticism because mm-hmm. I danced too, you know, and I was just like, okay, that's awesome. But we yeah. had to break her down and bring her bound down to real fundamentals, mm-hmm. which is like taking the rhythm out because I don't have to teach the rhythm. We know we yeah. can implement that later on because she has it naturally. True. But it's now making mm-hmm. her a little bit robotic. I yeah. need to get her robotic and really like just settling down on her feet, yeah. knowing where to stand. She's coming from a Muay Thai background, a striking mm-hmm. background, which people need to understand that striking is not boxing, boxing is not striking, it's very different. Yes, yeah, um, style. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there's um, technical aspects of it, knowing how to shift her weight, mm-hmm. not being heavy on the back foot, especially as a kicker, mm-hmm. if she's going to lean, you know, so we got to get her weight evenly distributed, yep. but knowing how to move laterally. Mm-hmm. And um, I see her style, and I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm working with her, I see her style similar to mine because I know that, that she has that rhythm. Mm-hmm. So I just got to get her fundamentals down and just yeah. really break it down. But let me tell you, it's such a pleasure, and I always say this about... You know, working with men, it's not against the men. I love working with women, number one, because I'm a woman and I think like a woman. It's a little easier to communicate, mm-hmm. but also because they, they, they're, they're, um, they're detail-oriented and they have like that photographic memory too, so I know they can look at my body and how it moves and they can emulate that yeah. even when we're sparring, mm-hmm. and that's something that Paige will see where it helps me as a coach to even better coach her alongside mm-hmm. Derek Santos, my boxing coach, who's also who's working with me with Paige. We all know well. Derek. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. You guys know my YouTube channel. I know Derek. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, basically right now, literally crawling before we even walk. Yeah. But what I love about, about you is that you're willing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You come in with this, you're such so coachable and easy to work with because you come in with that desire to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, no, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's the patience. And always a smile on the face. Yeah. 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 And it's such, it's, it's such, it's nice because we have a great group and everybody's super, you know, um, we just have such a special group. Mm-hmm. You know, it's rare to find that in combat sports. Yeah. And if they, they're with you, they're with you. And so everybody's excited for your development. I mean, Jake was in there today. Like, oh, she's got to do this. I'm like, dude, calm down. Not there yet. <laughs> like, relax. You know what I mean? Even with Steph, he's like, oh, I can hold the mids. I'm like, no, because you don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm like, just relax. I love that they want to help, though. Yeah. That's yeah. nice. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's like, okay, there's there's got to be this certain level, you know? And, and I remember even for myself when I first started, not knowing anything, mm-hmm. you know? And it brings me back to that and, and what would make me feel comfortable and what I would need, which is what I'm, from my experiences in growing in the sport, I'm, I'm giving mm-hmm. to you. Yeah. You know, so um, no, it's, it's great to work with her. How do you feel about it? 
I know she's putting you through some stuff. And, and <laughs> oh, actually yeah. slowing you down is, is going to be very beneficial. Right? Yeah. You got to crawl before you can walk. So. Well, and I think that's been the biggest um, area of, like, the biggest area I've lacked in in my career is really breaking down and doing just the fundamentals. Mm. The hard thing, you know, I, I love Team Alpha Male and I loved everything they gave me. Mm. Um, unfortunately, while I was there, there was a lot of coach turnover. True. So I feel like I never got to break down specifically, like, why you're doing each movement and what each movement is for. Yeah. And that's so important, you know, you can throw yeah. like 30 punch combos, but it's like, why? Like, why yeah. are you throwing those? And um, learning to react to what your opponent is doing. I feel like I never focused on that in my career. I was so athletically gifted mm -hmm. that I mm -hmm. could pick up any technique you want me to do, I can mm -hmm. do it, yeah. but I don't understand why or how to implicate that into yeah. actual sparring and what the purpose is. So I think that's where I, obviously mm. chose her as a coach is because I, I kind of liked her philosophy. I like that. Um, there is a lot of similarities. I've never had a high level female coach in my corner. So this is like, it's just so exciting because um, as much as you want to be able to communicate with male coaches, oh, yeah. It is different. Like, it's, yeah. there's still that, like, the gender barrier. Yeah. Whereas here, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I can be 100% open and she'll yeah. completely understand. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. I tell that to my daughters. It's pretty tough to talk to them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> They're teenagers, too. Uh -huh. You guys, if you have daughters, good luck. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think that, you know, with the bigger gyms, too, as well, it, you kind of get lost in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. and they And they're basically... You know, with a lot of gyms at that magnitude, you're looking at it as, okay, we just got to get them ready for the fight. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not really developmental. Mm -hmm. It's more just kind of like, all right, which fight are we working on? All right, what's the game plan? Let's use your strengths that you have and let's win the fight. Mm -hmm. And with this, we're kind of, and Maureen is taking you back a little bit more. Yeah. And really slowing it down. Slowing it yeah. down uh -huh. and, and being patient. And that's going to be good because that's not mm -hmm. only, and you're only 26. Yep. So you have a long career ahead of you, yeah. if you want to. You can oh, do whatever I definitely, you want. Yeah, I definitely yeah. want to, yeah. yeah. So, but no, what's your, and that kind of brings me to my next question. Uh -huh. What is your, like, what's your driving force? What's your motivation now? Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously the motivation for me is I just like to win. Yeah. I like to be successful. I, I can't see myself doing anything else. And mm -hmm. especially, yeah, I've been around now for a while. It's weird to say that I'm like a veteran at yeah, 26. 26. I'm a veteran in the UFC. I was mm -hmm. signed with them for yeah. almost seven years. And mm -hmm. so now it's just figuring out what I want, figuring it out, you know, figuring mm -hmm. out as I go. And obviously I'm extremely excited to fight for bare knuckle and I could continue to sign contracts with them and fight here forever yeah. but i'm leaving the door open maybe I'll, I'll do this contract here maybe i'll go into street boxing if like yeah. we think mm -hmm. that i'm developing that well and yeah. can be yeah. successful in real boxing i'll go there um yeah. maybe i'll go back to mma but for yeah. right now i i'm loving the idea of where i'm at yeah the transition is something new mm -hmm. um it's, mm -hmm. it's it's varying throughout your you're, now you're training only one particular aspect so yep. there's not a whole lot of moving parts yes which is, yeah uh, what i do see a lot of my mma guys that or girls that go into a different sport like boxing mm -hmm. or just like kickboxing or something like that they know they have to they don't have to train all those modalities of training yep so now they can really focus in and get better at it i think like connor the same thing when he fought mayweather mm -hmm. he was saying i was juggling three to four different plates mm -hmm. yep. i only have one plate i gotta juggle mm -hmm. so it's a lot easier to kind of focus in to focus on yeah, yeah. So with her, do you feel like this is something that is going to take it to the next level? you feel like she can have a career in boxing? Oh, I, I think so. I think, I mean, we've only had like a week of training and yeah. I can already see, but it's the fact that she's, she's listening and she's so coachable mm -hmm. and she's doing it. And you know, um, it's, it, I absolutely think she does. I think that, you know, we'll see when we get like, the other thing about, about Paige is that, you know, I've seen her fights and again, with her dancing and everything, it's her heart. Mm -hmm. You can't teach that. Mm -hmm. She's a fighter. She does have a lot of and, and And that's something you can't teach. You know, so the fact that she didn't have the fundamentals in other arts and the fact that I'm able and she's willing to allow me to take her back to this place, mm -hmm. I'm excited because yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I've got this this warrior that I already know is a warrior and now I can kind of like put the pieces together yeah. and then kind of like see what sticks but everything that I'm teaching her is sticking. Mm -hmm. So the communication is there, the mm -hmm. understanding is there, the work is there and cool. I mean, it can only go up from there. So, I mean, you know, everybody keeps asking, you know, they've asked her, they've asked myself, like, when is she going to be ready? Which, at first, the first, when I first got asked, which was like a couple of days ago, I'm like, no, she's not going to be ready at the next card. But you know what? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, my thing for her is to make sure that she's ready, mm -hmm. she's safe, and she's, you know, she's confident too in it. 
Yeah. You know, so I'm like, I don't know what the way the pace that I see her going right now and the way that the she's applying it and she keeps keeping what I show her from the previous training day. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's right now I can sit back and say, you know, it's an open ended question right now. I can't say definitely not. I can just say, you know what? I don't know. Yeah. I have to sit back and see. Yeah. OK, so I guess this is a question for both of y'all. What do you feel that females are lacking in the sport of combat sports, whether it be boxing, MMA, what do you feel like they need to work on more as opposed to the male counterpart? You can start. Or you can start. <laughs> yeah, both. Um, Listen, um, be, don't be nice. I want to, you got to, so you, you, you're, saying, you're representing I mean, all females. Oh, no, oh yeah, I, I, I might work right, with that. Let's go. Um, so you're talking about what they're lacking as far as like stylistically anything, or anything, anything like that? Anything, physically, mentally, emotionally, all of that. Um, I think, well, for me in boxing, I, I see some of the women a good, they're focused on what the men are doing. And mm. I understand why. I understand with the females in boxing, it's a lot of the money. Yeah. Like they're frustrated with the money. But then they're, they're not, you know, they're looking at that and they're like, they want to fight three minute rounds. Yeah. They want to fight 12 three minute rounds. But they're not looking at the counter of that, if that is that, and I'm, I'm opposed to it. I like mm -hmm. the 10 two minute rounds, not because I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, but the men do it because I'm a woman and I, and I like that I can, when I have the two minute rounds, I feel like there's more um, availability for me to fight during the year. So if I fight, I can fight four, 10, two, you know, two minute round fights, yeah. four of them a year. Yeah. The men are fighting like two yeah. world title fights because that's all they get. So then there's opportunity for us to make more money. Yeah. And the style of fighting is different. I've never seen a boring women's fight. I've seen plenty of boring male fights <laughs> where they're just like, and I'm like, bro, I can't watch this anymore. Like I literally rounds, I'm like, what round is it? Keep Come it on. Never yeah. saw in a female fight because it's so high paced because of those yeah. two minutes, which is what I'm excited about with Paige as well because yeah. that's a big transition for her too. Yeah. She went from five minute five minute rounds, right? Because five minute rounds to, to two, two minute, minute rounds, five two minute rounds. So it's going to be, but she's got the rhythm, and that's not even. And plus, well, obviously, working with you with conditioning and everything, mm -hmm. it's going to be great. But I think that's a big part of it. Stop focusing on what the men are doing, yeah. um, and and the marketing aspect of it. Market yourself as an individual. You know, um, I see a lot of them are doing that right now. Yeah. Skill set wise, what I see a lot of these promoters doing is taking these uh, Olympians and God bless their soul. They're not it, it, going from the Olympics, going from the amateurs to the pros, completely different. It's like apples to oranges. Yeah. So you're seeing these girls now that are developing in the pros. And I'm like, but they're not good. Yeah. Not yet. You know, you've got these girls that have six fights fighting for world titles. It's like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you put the, one of those girls in there with me, I'm going to knock them out. <laughs> and I'm not saying that because all, oh, it's because I got 30 thumb fights. Yeah, yeah, and I've yeah. got 15 years as a professional. And I've learned the hard way. I have losses. I have a draw. I've got stuff that I went through. You That's know, whether it's sparring, whether it's training at multiple gyms, like getting these girls the experience they need before just shooting them up to a world title fight. Yeah. You know? Um, and I feel that that's, it's unfortunate for them because yeah. there's women like me that are still around. Yeah, yeah, true. Okay, Paige, what do you think? <laughs> what I think women... Can you follow that, by the way? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Fuck. No, no, that was great. <laughs> um, I don't see women lacking anything. There you go. Spokesperson for Comparable the to men. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as, I mean, I can only speak to Physically, MMA. they have their own yeah. styles. I can only yeah. speak exactly. to MMA, but... Exactly. I think that women's fights are just as exciting. Mm -hmm. I think that when you put a woman in, see, I'm getting, I don't I'm, know. Get, I'm getting it, <laughs> I'm getting bashed right now. <laughs> I got two females in here saying, this. okay, so let's do this then. What do you feel that men do that females don't do, or I should say this? What do you feel the, the contrast is between? A male fighter and a female fighter you feel like they go after it a little bit more because they have more to prove mm -hmm. because but I, I do see that a lot so I'll I say see. between yeah, yeah. female and male fighters I think a big thing that separates them is I do feel like women fight emotionally yeah. and I feel like that can be a negative but it mm -hmm. also can be very positive passion. it can passionate. be passion and yeah. you mm -hmm. there's an element yeah. of passion when you see a female fight the reason you're not ever going to see a boring female fight is because the passion and sure. the, like the fire inside of them mm -hmm. and i don't necessarily that we don't feel like we have anything to prove mm -hmm. i don't think that's an element but we're em more emotional than men women mm -hmm. are more emotional and i think that's what makes the fight so exciting is because yeah. we go in there and lay our whole heart on the line. True. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I, I do feel like it's because we have a little bit more to fight for. I mean, maybe not, maybe MMA, maybe in boxing. 
I feel mm-hmm. like the women like myself who came prior that we have to because we had to fight for all of this. You know, mm-hmm. Olympics wasn't around mm-hmm. until 2013, where mm-hmm. a lot of us were already pro. We'd have the opportunity. Mm-hmm. I'm happy that there's opportunity now, but I, I would like to see those girls develop a little bit more. Yeah. But I see like Clarissa Shields is getting better. You know, mm-hmm. when she first started, and I see her developing a little bit better. Same thing with Michaela Meyer. And I watched these girls when they were yeah. younger. I've met a lot of them. I sparred with a couple of them. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so I like to see that they're they're developing now. That's going to be to their benefit. Sure. But I feel like women are still at least in boxing. They're still having to fight more for the recognition they just started putting women on tv yeah. you know it was amazing with what ronda had i believe what ronda went through and even yourself mm-hmm. like you guys helped women's boxing because mm-hmm. we were like stone ages mm-hmm. until mm-hmm. mma came along and people used to ask me like all oh, these mma fighters you i'm like no i'm grateful yeah. you know and then when holly you know holly was a boxer and to put ronda yeah. on the cover of ring magazine was really disrespectful mm-hmm. that holly didn't get that opportunity because holly was a, world, a multiple time world champion in boxing mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and it, it was it was tough for us but i never looked at it like because i'm all about the females but it wasn't like women against women it was more like I'm happy they're shining the light on mm-hmm. because they're giving us an opportunity to shine too mm-hmm. yeah. in combat sports. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, obviously a different sport, but it gave the promoters like, oh, look what Dana White did with the women. And also yeah. the pretty girl thing, you know, guess what? That, that was my problem when I, same thing that mm-hmm. you went through when I was coming up. You know, they looked at me like that and you know, you're not, you're too pretty to fight. And I'm like, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you don't know what's inside of me. You know yeah. what I mean? So I think Rhonda being out there and the women yeah. like yourself that are feminine, mm-hmm. that still were badasses, helped yeah. the women like us too. I can see that. I can see you, Rhonda, like, obviously more of an attractive side. And people and females before, they didn't think they could do that because of that. You know, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, that's, that's for, like, females that are, quote, unquote, not pretty or Well, you look like a fighter. And I'm like... Yeah. I don't, what I does that I'm mean? Like, what does that mean? Like, what I was just my shoes. I'm like, yeah. I broke my nose. Does that count? Like, I don't yeah. understand. Yeah. No, that's cool. So, all right. Now, getting into the bare knuckle thing, all right? What do you think is going to be your biggest challenge going into bare knuckle? Um, I don't necessarily see the biggest challenge being the bare knuckle part. I mm-hmm. see the bigger challenge being the boxing part. I'm sure. going from MMA where... Um, I have been in MMA for a very long time. It's, yeah. you know, you have a lot of habits and a lot of things that translate very well, but there's a lot of stuff. Boxing is so different. Yeah. And I feel like in MMA, you can get away with being good at everything. Mm-hmm. But when you're boxing, you have to be great at one thing. Yeah. There's so yes. many less elements. Yes. You have to be great. You have to, you have to do it right. And mm-hmm. you have to be strategic. Whereas... Yeah. You know, you can let your striking go if you're an amazing wrestler yeah, and you yeah. can just rely on that one skill set, but mm-hmm. you can't supplement with anything else. You have to be a good boxer. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the same as a, like a team sport and an individual sport. Mm-hmm. Like you can rely on your teammates and mm-hmm. inside there, you really can't. Now, yep. you have to rely on your defense, your offense, and your hands. That's yeah. it. Mm-hmm. You have nothing else. All right, so I always ask two questions. You've already done this before. <laughs> always ask two questions for all of my guests. Okay. The first one is going to be, what is your daily routine? Now, okay. this could be just when you wake up in the morning and then maybe the first few hours that you wake up. That's like that morning routine that uh-huh. I always like to find out. Um, a morning routine. Uh, I wake up, <laughs> I have coffee, mm-hmm. and I go to the gym. And that's it. <laughs> there isn't like a whole morning routine, and I feel terrible. Simplicity. But that's it. Nice. Every morning. All right. So now, because let's face it, the podcast is called Daru Strong Podcast. Uh-huh. What does a strong individual, or what does the definition of a strong individual mean to you? Okay. It, be, it doesn't, have to, be, doesn't have to be physical, I always tell that. So yeah. I would say to be a strong individual, you have to, well, I think you have to not be told. Like, you have to be strong in your beliefs, strong mm-hmm. in your faith, strong in who you are, okay. and be able to be that person mm-hmm. when nobody else is around. Gotcha. Okay. So, and pride. And, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maureen, I know. <laughs> no, but I love that. I love the authenticity factor. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's a big part of, I, I know myself, you know, being unapologetically authentic is something that I always talk about mm-hmm. and owning your truth and knowing your why and mm-hmm. understanding your purpose, yeah. you know, and I love that you said about faith because, you know, like we spoke about too, you know, I'm a believer and, mm-hmm. and he's, and God has led my entire career, you know, and it's nice to know that I, I have somewhere to put some stuff when I'm not in control, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you know, understand the importance of that too for yourself. Yep. And I think that's also what, what makes our bond, going to make our bond that much stronger because he's guiding us, yep. you know, it's not just about yeah. us and about yeah. everything else. It actually takes a strong individual just to even to admit that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Mm-hmm. For you, I feel like you do, you haven't even hit your prime yet, so mm-hmm. it's going to be yeah. fun to watch. Exciting. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
All right, guys. So that's it. Um, no. You got it. We're good. <laughs> No social media at the moment, right? No, no. I'm well. No, everyone can still follow me on Instagram and stuff. Go ahead, but go ahead. shoot your stuff. At Paige Van Zant. <laughs> <laughs> Easy work. All right, Maureen, go ahead. Uh, Maureen underscore Shay. All right, there it is. Follow them. They got tons of followers, anyways. But go ahead and do that. <laughs> Episode twenty six. We're out.